Wow, can't believe I'm gonna do live Facebook again. You know, just a, cu a couple things that uh, I wanna say really quick, which is momentum enough to put on Facebook. And I'm pretty tired right now. It's 5.30 in the morning as I charge my car up on my 16 hour shift or so. So I'm really at the end of my shift. Um, so I'll try to keep my wits about me as, as I barely could stay awake an hour ago. But anyhow, look at what's going on with Russia and the Ukraine and everything else. You know, I'd love to sit here and talk about the hypocrisy and how it's unbelievable that there's no reference in any of the U.S. media to Yugoslavia or any of the other wars that America has gone into in the 90s and 2000s. And, and to hear the whole buildup and to hear all the criticism and about who's being a bully and about who's invading who and about who's not following the UN and about false flag operations and <laughs> literally every tactic that the American government used, why it invaded so many countries that you can't even count. And are we going to say that America was a bully? Oh my God. And and then, and then not on, just to show you that other places in the world have propaganda step, step by step, hand in hand, to hear all the other countries call out Putin and criticize and just and chastise and, and everything else. Why is it? Because Kiev has people that are white in it, that speak English, that look good on the camera. And whenever you look at all the Middle Eastern people or the are the black people or the people in Africa and Sudan or the Yemenis or the Palestinians, they're not so photogenic because they're not speaking English and there's no special reports and there's no save this or save there was nothing. So, so that the hypocrisy and the ludicrousy of the whole thing that there's all this anti Putin and, and one of the loudest voices come from America. I mean, come on. How many times did the United States completely go outside what the UN is? Hmm? How many times did everybody in the UN vote against what's happening in Palestine? So, the hypocrisy is just surreal. It's absolutely, phenomenally surreal. Okay? Um, number one, but number... That's not really... Right now, we're facing a danger that it doesn't matter about right or wrong. It doesn't matter about who's a hypocrite and who's not. We're facing a great, great danger right now. And what's happening in Ukraine right now, do I think it's right that Russia, that Putin's invading the Ukraine? No. Are there fascist Nazi groups in the Ukraine? Yeah, there are. There's like pictures of them online and there's there's they're neo-nazi sure is the ukraine government nazi probably not probably not any more nazis than they are in the u.s is there fascism in ukraine probably is there anything reason to invade ukraine should putin be invading ukraine no no country should invade any country right there should be no invading of any country but but you know what right now there's a problem right now, and there's two problems. The first problem is the level of uh, nationalism and propaganda in corporate media in the U.S. That's a big problem right now because people are blind. The second problem is the general literacy rate and, and, and literacy rate in the U.S. Not about just everyday things, but about historical things. I mean, even myself, until I had like 80 hours, 100 hours of lectures and, and books, did I... I didn't even know about uh, what happened in World War One and World War Two, and, and and the East Front until I finished Dan Carlin's uh, Hardcore History, you know, twenty-hour podcast. So wow, wow, I learned I learned more than what I knew, or, or until I read Smetley Butler's book, 
um, you know, are about his his life and career. And, and so I, I know that there's a lot of people out there that don't know, that don't know about the East Front. And they don't know about when Germany fought Russia. I mean, I'm sure all the Europeans do. But in America, they don't realize that there's more people that died. Germany lost millions more than what they lost fighting on the West Front. Than what they lost fighting England and France and the U.S. And, and the Western countries. What Germany lost when they fought Russia and the atrocities that these countries committed together were, were huge. Should be World War Three, I think. I mean, I mean the 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 German machine was was strong and 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 perfectly fine tuned, the most high tech army at the time. And and when they went into poor Russia, you know, the same propaganda we hear today. Oh, their GDP is so low, they're so poor, and, and they thought there's no way that. Germany will lose like Napoleon lost. And when they went in there and they went into Russia and and with their fine-tuned machines, so high-tech, they were shooting so many people. And they kept sending more Russians and sending more. And so many people were getting shot, they actually had to clear the bodies so they could shoot through them. And they started running out of bullets. And then Russia started pulling back. And like the front line became like the width of the United States or something. It was like their supply chain was so long and and even though the Germans machine was so great there's just so many people they just kept and then and, and Stalin said if you turn back you, I'll kill you and your family and and nobody could give up and it was terrible it was and and the and the the monstrosities I suggest anybody check out the East Front uh, a book in a series by uh, Dan Carlin it's it's like a multi 10 hour series it's unbelievable what happened on the East Front. I, I I had no idea the depth of the human tragedy that happened there. And and that scope, World War II, all the wars, the scope of death is so great and so ruthless that we should be educated about that, and we're not. And if you're not educated, history repeats. And you should be scared about that history. And here's the thing, Germany and, 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 and Russia were not really great pals after the Second World War, right? Today, Germany said, we're going to provide lethal aid weapons for the first time. It was, in, it was against the law for Germany to, to give weapons to countries before, since World War II, that would be used in aggression or anything else. That was actually against the law, but today they threw that out the window and said, okay, they're going to give Ukraine stingers and, and other weapons. You're the U.S. government yesterday. Okay, we're going to supply lethal aid. Oh, no, because when you turn on Fox News and these other, and they've got the generals and they've got all these other American propaganda stations, and they say things like, we're going to be getting involved in this in the future this is a danger and not every station says that but the extreme stations like fox and stuff you actually heard them and they don't repeat because normally they repeat stuff in a loop like three or four thousand times and on different ways and different channels so you kind of get brainwashed a little bit but some things that they don't repeat all the time are the things you got to listen for and some of those things that they said last night on fox news which they haven't said the next day some of the generals mentioned probably about five times they let it slip there's a good chance we're going to get involved in this down the line when we start supplying weapons. They must have heard that on Fox News and said, oh, don't say that anymore. Now they're saying things like, oh, well, well, they, they, they have all this, all this white noise like, oh, it's because your president is weak and the last president was strong. Let's make it political and, and we need to be energy dependent and that's why gas prices, we need energy, energy, we need to, they don't want to, everybody's a slave to Russia. If, what we'll do is we'll sell oil and we'll free Europe with our great American oil. And it's like 19, it's like 20th century imperialism capitalism classic classic stuff that's from the last century which should die actually that that should die we, we shouldn't be living underneath that simplistic greedy error of our humanity energy production 
Jesus Christ, you hear the news and people are, they'll do a report on Fox News and they'll, they'll talk to the, some ladies in the underground and they'll talk about how hard it is and how they're getting bombed and say, oh my God, that's, that's so tragic. Oh my, we're, we're here with you. You're in our heart and minds. And then as soon as I didn't read over, you know, America has what it needs to set these people free. We could be energy independent and we could, we could get them not addicted to Russia. And, and it's like, it is so cringe worthy, so classless and so simple minded. And it's so sad because half of the U S population believes that they believe that, uh, communism is going to take them over because they're not making enough oil from the same oil companies that had Mexico city invaded because the oil and the, in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. You remember when the Marines went in Mexico city and they bombed a uh, Naval Academy with a bunch of kids there and killed them. Or just like when the U S went all over South America, but, but that's past century shit. During the, during the Cuban missile crisis, which nobody in the younger generation is educated about that. We were so close to a nuclear war. I've actually heard some stories that say we should have had a nuclear war, but there was a mistake and the missile didn't get launched or something like that. Do you hear that word mentioned once in the past four days, Cuban missile crisis? Remember how the people were glued to their TV and scared? I grew up in schools in America doing duck and cover exercise where they do the thing. You have to get underneath that thing and pretend there's going to be a nuclear war from the Cold War times, right? But there's no mention of that. Now there's mention of, ah, we got to send our troops over there. We got to get ready. We got to not let them bully us. I pick up people in Uber all the time. You know what they say? They say, Oh, I, I, I really want to go over there. I'm going to go drive. You want to sign up? I'm going to sign up. And you hear kids talk about bloodlust. Like I remember I was a child watching Vietnam movies when I was a little kid before I left America and got my brain unwashed. I used to do things like dream that I could be in a Vietnam war. Oh, when could be my turn to go to World War One? Oh, I wish I could have been more born in World War II. I would have killed Hitler. That was the kind of dreams that I had as a child. And I'd have to say those are common American child's dreams that they dream of a war. I realize now, after leaving the U.S. for so long and coming back and, and, and realizing the sickness and the illness would led me to dream that. And, and I, I remember that and I'm not that person anymore. But I remember that, that call and I, I hear people, carload after carload of young boys saying, oh, I wish I could go fight, sign up, and uh, that's terrible, that is a real bad thing to wish for, and for the people that are used to going into other third world countries, as we call them, because America is not third world, even though it's full of poverty, and nobody could go to the doctors, and there's no school buses for kids, and fuck it, <laughs> Whoever made this, I don't know what second world is. We never hear about that, right? We hear first world and third world, right? Well, even though I think America's third world, they tell they they think, oh, we go in these other countries like like Libya and we just destroy their government, assassinate, or we do what we did in Haiti, we take half their gold billion, rob their bank with a team of Marines. Are we going to Afghanistan or Iraq or where people are some of the poorest people in the world and and we just take what we want? Nobody stands up to him, which is the opposite of like Sudan and where, where people are starving and there's nobody standing. How come we don't go to those people in Sudan? There's no nuclear weapons there to stop the U.S. to, to scare. Okay, so it's not about helping the person being bullied. Okay, but, but you know what? That's not even the topic right now. The topic right now is what's happening right now. People have to realize that this isn't a third world country that's more third world than the U.S. When when they're going to face Russia, 
after you say, oh yeah, you won the Second World War and everything else. No, no, Russia, the East Front, Germany, they, they lost millions and millions there, right? To such a large extent that people can't imagine. So when everybody's saying, oh yeah, Russia, I heard some propaganda on the American TV. Oh, Russia's got the GDP of one of our states, Mississippi or somewhere, or Tennessee. And look, I don't know if this is making everybody in the U.S. feel like they're big headed and like they, and they got the, they're the biggest dog on the block. And, and I think that, you know, let's, I like to say Conor McGregor. I don't know if anybody watches that UFC, the, the Irish guy, the Irish boxer kid that was talking so much trash. Oh, I'm the best. And he was he, he beat everybody. And then this Russian guy called Khabib or whatever, he went to go fight this Russian guy. And um, and this Russian guy just pretty much uh, outclassed him in every way and beat him. And he was really kind of soft-spoken. And just like Putin, Putin said, if any country interferes with this, what do you say? We will do something that will make you it will be, do something worse than what you've ever known in your history. And Putin has never been a big talker. And one thing I know from living in China, I mean, America's the big talker. They got the best and they're the best in the world and everybody wants to be with them and it's the land of the free and the land of the brave and everything's a danger for our democracy and American numero uno. And they're so, they're just like Conor McGregor. They're like WWF every day, America. <sighs> Look, and I've seen you know what I've seen drunk Americans come to China at night, get really drunk on the streets and barbecue, and they and they think that they're uh, agnostic. They they boast and they and they get in a street fight, and all of a sudden, because they think the Chinese people, because in other cultures they're very quiet, and they don't show their emotions and stuff. And then they find out when you, it's a fight, it's like 20 people in hatchets and it's like a deadly situation. You got to tell the new Americans, hey, hey, calm down. This isn't America. You're not going to talk. You're not going to fight people in the streets. You need to calm down, buddy. Well, well, the thing is right now, nobody. you, you watch the news and you see them talking about Kiev. You say, oh, look, it's day three. <laughs> oh, my God. Putin must be really discouraged because he's not, it's not as easy as he thought it would be. Look at the resistance from the Ukraine army. Look, Prince, remember, was it Sweden or Finland that got invaded by Russia after the second war when they were trying to fight Germans? And they actually did pretty good fighting the Russians until millions of Russians came and they took over in a second. Look, Russia has so much heavy artillery and, and atmospheric bomb. They have, they have things that they could wipe Kiev off the face of the map just like what the U.S. did when Afghanistan and Iraq and, and so on and so forth in Yugoslavia. Look, Russia could completely destroy Kiev if it wanted to. It's not. It's not destroying Kiev. It's it's It could have destroyed lots of things. It could have heavy bombing and everything. And you hear the American news media say, oh, he's frustrated. Look, he hasn't done that much. It's like, what what, what does the American media want to see? Do you want to see that happen? Do you want to see what it's like when 3 million people get erased? Because that could happen. I'd say that because he hasn't done that and because he's been somewhat slow, I'd say he lost 4,000 troops and he didn't attack and destroy everybody after he lost those so-called 4,000 Russian troops, I'd say that's a sign that he's showing a little bit of restraint. If, you know, and, and how, how do people think it's going to work? We got 45,000 troops on the border of NATO here. And Germany's going to, and Germany and the U.S. are going to start supplying weapons. Do you think that the Russians and the Ukrainians are going to be fighting and the Russians are going to say, you know what, we're going to stop why don't you go over there and open up your new box of these shiny new missiles, and then you could start shooting at us. We'll wait for you to get those new missiles. Look, if Ukrainian army uses these weapons to inflict any serious damage to the Russian side, the Russian side will do what any other army would do. They will target the weapon suppliers. And it's World War. It's it. Bombs will be launched. You know, there's 15,000 nuclear weapons in our arsenal they say and i've heard that 
if 5% of those weapons, let's say 5% of two, two, let's say 200 weapons, right? If 200 nuclear bombs get launched, do you know what's going to happen? I know a lot of people are thinking about, well, well, I mean, after the people die from the bomb and after the radiation from the fallout, forget that. Do you know what would happen after after 5% of our nuclear arsenal of, of those 200 nuclear uh, nuclear weapons after they were launched assuming there's somebody still alive the atmosphere and our climate it would be like volcanoes went off during the dinosaurs it would cause huge immense climate damage I've, I've heard some scientists say that it would drop the temperature like 20 degrees almost instantly instantly it would cause an ice age conditions like overnight from all the pollution from from the detonated atomic bombs that would be going to our atmosphere and kicking up so much less so if you survive the fallout and you weren't bombed you'd be facing instant ice age situation there it's not good for humanity in fact it's so bad it, it, during the cuban missile crisis when the people were still alive, they could remember what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and they could remember Oppenheimer's words, and they could remember World War II and World War I. They were glued to their TV during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And right now, we have more than two nuclear powers that have said they're going to supply weapons to Kiev when Putin directly said, any country that interferes and this operation will have something that's had not happened to them during the whole history. I don't think he's bluffing. Just like Khabib, just like McGregor, just like what we talked about with, with face and Asian cultures. It's not a bluff. It's a warning. It is a warning. And, and I would suggest that everybody shut down their mainstream media forget everything else and forget all the other wars if you think 9-11 was bad what you're not thinking about nuclear warfare if you think there's a terrorist problem if you think there's a danger everything we've done in the past 50 years since world war ii every advancement we made as a society as flawed as we are and whatever our imperfections this is a serious time when every single country needs to step back, I would say, okay, look, let's instantaneously dissolve NATO. Let's create a new armistice agreement for every country stating that we will not have more than 10,000 troops stationed outside of your own country and only 500 tons of, 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 of warfare material. We should make an immediate new armistice. NATO is, 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 is last century. We need to dissolve NATO. We need to make inclusive of Russia and everybody else. We need to make a new agreement and we need to stand down fast. We are not going to make the same mistakes what, are, what our humanity has made in World War I and World War II and all the previous generations, the empires that have come and gone. We are way too powerful that and we're, we're very destructive. We have a little bit of greed tendency and we're, we're making some mistakes as a humanity. But this is a great filter event. This is something that could destroy all of humanity. I mean, it's it's something that we should be talking about on mainstream news. Even if there's a slightest chance, what we talk about, we're, we're all freaked out about COVID. How many people is COVID killing are going to kill compared to nuclear war? Or we're all united and, and, and stay safe and together we stand and, and put on a mask and don't worry about the nuclear war. Huh. Man, everybody's over essentialized in the U.S. They're, they're so used to violence and they're so used to, to COVID and, and, and they're so working because they got to pay for their high rent and their insurance that they're missing the point. We are closer than ever, closer than the Cuban Missile Crisis to having a nuclear war right now. A confrontation you know I've got you know it's really funny I got this electric car here I I've got a, a diesel still in my house and, and me and my wife and my kids we were working on going to find gold and I got all this equipment to go find gold and we could survive for a long time out there and I, I wish I had a four-wheel drive but it's close enough and uh 
and I'm actually for the first time in my life when I over the past couple days I'm thinking well I never imagined that I'd be thinking there might be a nu nuclear war in my future I'm not one of those crazy prepper guys or anything like that but I have taught my wife and kids that look within the next week after these weapons start being delivered and after we start seeing the results from those weapons and the reactions from the Russians we could be seeing nuclear war the, the timeline for nuclear war I guess is a timeline from the delivery and the use and the execution of the weapons that have just been committed to being delivered today and yesterday so I give that about a four day window before we see their use and their implementation in the field four days max and when when all the, when when Russia does take off its gloves and it goes into Kiev and you see all those friendly English speaking white people that sound much more nice and gentle than the people you were bombing in in the Middle East and Asia when all those people start crying and you see them screaming for help and how can this be in the middle of Europe because it's okay if it's in the middle of Asia or or Africa or whatever but when all the other countries protest if Russia hasn't already retaliated against NATO troops supplying weapons which are causing damage to their army the other countries will rise and protest and they already asked for volunteer army like what happened with Francisco Franco there's going to be an incident it could be either from the weapons it could be from the local people in the local countries protesting to support the poor Ukrainians that are getting slaughtered it could be a miscalculation there's, there's a lot of possibilities that could lead to confrontation between NATO troops and Russia, which will be 90% chance of nuclear war first attack the first time in our history. I hope I'm wrong. And what if I'm not wrong? And, and what if the chances that I'm wrong are less than the chance that COVID is bad and going to kill all the humans? I mean, come on. How many people does COVID kill? What what chance is that? What are the odds? You, I, I, somebody gonna say the odds are worse than fifty fifty right now? What what if it's what? How, well, okay, what about seventy thirty? Seventy percent chance there won't be nuclear. What thirty percent chance? That's okay. We could still take that chance for the, all of humanity, for everything we have, for all your families and all the kids and and everybody else and and surviving. How long we survive? We're really gonna put it on the line for thirty percent chance right now. We need to have this kind of this kind of dialogue. We need to have the smartest people on this earth and the most popular people on this earth and the richest people on this earth and Tesla people and all this other stuff that we're so great. great. We've got so much money and, and success. We need to right now take a look at what is exactly happening. Are we going to die during this transition? Is this where humans end on the timeline? We haven't been here that long. Look at the di you see those dinosaurs. Well, this dinosaur is 10 million years old. They were here for 10 million. Well, it's better than the humans. We can't even make it a couple hundred thousand years. Why? Because because why we we're doing great with phone development and electric cars. We can't do good on 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 a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Don't have a nuclear war. And and you can't right now the nationalism and all. All the, you you can't I, I can't have this conversation with the average person in the U.S. And, and and you know what I'm sure my 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 friends in in Eastern Europe they really know what I'm saying here and and some of my friends in China might know some of what I'm saying. We need wise leaders. We need leaders right now that will lead the people that don't know without intimidation. I don't know that I'm using the best language. I know that I could sound intimidating and sound pompous and everything else, which I don't mean to sound. But but right now, we are in great danger. So I've got all this gear at home, and I'm thinking, well, tell my wife, well, look, let's look at a possible nuclear strike map of the U.S. Where is the most likely nuclear strike targets? You know, I'm trying to get a Geiger counter from Amazon. <laughs> but you know what? You only got a little bit of time for You got to get next day delivery because when there's nuclear war, there's no more Amazon, right? This electric car won't work either. My solar charger can't charge it. I need to get all the cash out of my bank, which I don't have a lot of cash. And I got my bills coming through my bank automatically because if there's a nuclear war, 
all of a sudden you can't get your cash out of the banks, right? And if you don't have cash and you can't buy gas for your car, where are you gonna go? And and that's and that sounds and that sounds crazy. But what sounds crazier is I can listen to all the media, and I do, I scan through all the media. And on American media, you barely hear what's going on without endless loops, the same video playing over and over, the same point, oh, energy efficiency, Trump will be our new president, and he'll solve this problem, and, and oh my God. The minute the people will realize that that's the wrong, that all this is like a fake, I mean, you listen to the news here, it's like they're advertising for a new movie coming out next week in the United States. The propaganda is unreal. But I know that the people realize that the bombs have been launched and there's 30 minutes to detonation. They're going to say, oh my God, well, it's not a movie. You know, I see people going out all night and no, not, not a single person has a casual conversation about about uh, what's going on in Ukraine right now. As I listen, as I pick up, you know, 40 people doing Uber rides. And, I sing, and a couple of people didn't say, oh, what's going on over there? Yeah, I heard this. And, and they, they hear like 5% of what, what's going on over there. And and, they, and it's glorified like, like it's a recent Hollywood action movie. Well, yeah, I'd like to go do that. So, um, God help us all. And I hope that there's smarter people out there than me that could really start the conversation with their with their colleagues or their friends. We we are facing a great filter event. You go look at that up if you don't know what that means. And 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 our entire existence as humanity is right now in danger. Right now. Haven't we learned anything? to to forget all the small talk at the UN and NATO haven't we rose isn't there somebody's mom or grandma says okay come and sit down we need to talk about this we are young and we are foolish as a society we're selfish and we're greedy and we're destroying the earth and everything else it's no reason for us to die as a humanity as dark and as pessimistic as our humanity is, we should have optimism that there's some part of our humanity that deserves to survive. And uh, how do you when you talk? How do you how do you paraphrase this? How do you say something like that to people, your your common neighbor? Hey hey, let's talk about our possible end of the life nuclear event coming up this week. And I know I got to be a slave every minute till I. Till I die, try to get as much money as my family as I can. I, I wish I had money. I wish I could go take my wife and kids right now and go out and camp and say, okay, let's just chill out for a couple weeks. This is and and and, and keep an eye on what's going on. But I gotta go to work. And but my my mind's on. I mean, how do you go to work? I mean, did everybody go to work when 9/11 start happened here in the U.S. or or was every everybody was working fine when they were dropping bombs in Afghanistan? I know. But but right now I have a hard time working fine. Knowing what's happening in Ukraine. And yeah, that's that's terrible what's happening to those. Like, it's terrible all over the world. There's a lot of places in the world right now where bad things are happening to people. But there's nothing more bad than nuclear war. And that should be on everybody's mind. It might be the last thing that you think about. And, and how do you have that conversation with your unknowing neighbor? Say, hey, friend, you guys having a good time? You want to party like there's no tomorrow? Or at least you should know what's going on. No matter what you think, no matter what your political dissuasion is, you should know what's happening right now. Whatever your goals are, whatever your financial, whatever, whatever. Grab your wife and grab your kids and grab your family and really think about where we're at right now on the human timeline. I know you don't know what happened in World War One and World War Two and in South American wars and and the empire and the good things and the bad. I know that a lot of people don't know because I mean, come on, a lot of stuff. What I thought I knew, come on, until I start driving Uber a hundred hours a week. When's the last time you think I had to to read thousand page books? Wow, I could finally get all the reading I want through audiobooks and and that's great. 
because you got a lot of, after you haven't been able to read books for years, you've got a long reading list, let me tell you, and a lot of topics that you didn't have time to get into that you really get a lot of time as an Uber driver. And, and they're very, very informative. But I can tell you what, even my wife, I'm trying to make, make them read all kinds of books, but you're not going to be able to educate your neighbors about, about what you know and about what you don't know. And you're not going to get education from them. And right now, in the next four days, that timeline, those weapons from delivery to implementation and use in the field and Russia's reaction to the people that are delivering the weapons, they're decimating their forces or the reaction of the people in Europe when when Russia decides to take off the gloves and goes in there with heavy artillery and starts causing bloodshed and people protest and there's intervention are one of those scenarios. That's it. And after all that work you've done, after all the houses you bought, and about all that paycheck you got coming next week, and about the doctor bill you just paid off, and that school loan you just, it all doesn't matter anymore because that's it. It's the end of the world. So anyways, that's my uh, live stream. Somebody do me a favor and publish it. And put it on CNN and CNBC and MSNBC and Fox News and NDR and BBC Live. Put it on there. And for reading reference, if you get a chance to read before you die, check out Dan Carlson's Hardcore History. Check out World War I, The East Front, and World War II. It's only like 60 hours of audiobooks. And, uh... The, the the things that happened in those wars, the, the, they, they call it a meat grinder, World War I, for a reason. I, I don't think people have a really true understanding of, of the horrors of World War I and World War II until you really, really study it. Oh my God, it was so, so bad. Humanity is capable of terrible inhumaneness. And for anybody that thinks, well, do you want to just drop an atom? Yeah. Yeah, humans would drop an atom bomb. That is exactly what is in our instinct to do to each other. We are terrible animals. We can't let this happen. Okay. Good luck in every, to everybody. Godspeed. There'll be no Facebook. There'll be no... There'll be no if, if, this, if there is nuclear war, it's it. So this is just like personal therapy, I guess. I mean, I I don't know if you don't have anxiety. I don't know. You don't got a pulse. Open up your eyes, friends. We're running out of time. Goodbye. I hope, I hope I'm wrong. Please let me be wrong.